Hi, my name is Kevin Wendt. I'm a senior instructor for the Web Programming and Database Development Program here at Dunwoody College of Technology. Uh, this is another video in the series of introductory programming concepts for our intro programming students. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the more advanced topics, it's uh, overflow. So we were talking about overflow. And now we're going to talk about how numbers are represented on the computer to understand why overflow happens. This is binary. You should understand or at least recognize it by now. Um, what we have here is an eight, in an 8-bit system, all you have is 8 bits. So numbers are represented like this. 1 is 1, zeros with a 1, 0 is 2, zeros with 1, 1 is 3. Very typical binary counting solution. You just keep adding 1 and you keep adding 1s and zeros. Very, very straightforward, very typical. That's how you count positive numbers. Then you get to 16-bit computers, you add another set of 8. So all of this is zeros with ones following all the way behind. 32,767 is what this number represents. Well, now we've been counting, how do we represent a negative number? How does a computer recognize a negative number from this system? We do that using this last bit. In a 16-bit system, it would be this bit here. So this one. In an 8-bit system, it would be here. If we're assuming a 16-bit system, so I don't know, say a Super Nintendo, what we'd have is this number being the biggest positive number you can get. And then this number is a negative number because it, is the, it has a sign bit of 1, signifying that it is negative. Now the question is, what negative number is this? Is it negative zero? Because if zero, is represented by all zeros, then isn't this negative zero? Well, actually in old systems like the SNES, maybe it was. That's not how they're represented today. What we do is figure out what, not just what this number is, but also what this number is. This one, we'll, we'll, we'll leave this one alone for a minute. What's this number? Possibly negative 1. That would make sense. It's negative and then just has a 1 in all the other numbers. That would make sense. But that's not what it is. What we have is actually the biggest negative number. And I know that's counterintuitive because there are so many zeros everywhere else. But the reason we do this is so that we can add. Let's assume that this number was negative 1. Now add it to 1. What do you get? Add it bitwise. So here you have 1 and 1, so that must be 0. You carry the 1 that you added and you get 1 here. Well, that's negative 2, right? Because the negative sign is still here, and we've got 2 over here. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. And computers have to add. That's what, that's what they do. In fact, subtracting is just adding a negative number. That's how the computer handles adding and subtracting. So this can't work this way, because adding would screw everything up. Adding 1 and negative 1 should be 0, not negative 2. So that's not how it works. Instead, we do what's called two's complement. There was an original version called one's complement, which caused a lot of problems with, like, for example, this being negative zero, when there's only one true zero. We can't have that. We can't have zero and negative zero. That, would, that wouldn't make any sense. And it would confuse a lot of computer programs. So what we do instead is called two's complement. What you do is for every number, you take the complement, the bitwise complement of that number, and add 1, and that makes the negative of that number. So if we wanted negative 1, let, let's do just an example on an 8-bit system. The bitwise complement of this number is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. All you do is flip every bit to its opposite. So zeros become 1s, and that 1 becomes a 0. Same all the way through. Then you add 1.
that is now negative 1. Now let's make sure it works the other way. What's the bitwise complement of this? Take a second, hit pause, see if you can get the bitwise complement of this number, and then the 2's complement of that number. So if you gave it a try, here's what you should have gotten. The bitwise complement is just turning all 1's to zeros, and it's all 1's, so it becomes all zeros. Now the 2's complement of that number is the bitwise complement plus 1. Is that 1? Yes, it is. Therefore, we know that negative 1 is correct here because we can get it all the way back to 1 again, doing the bitwise complement, the 2's complement, one more time. So let's go back to this number. We've got the biggest number here, 32,767. Well, what's the bitwise or 2's complement of this number? Well, then it's going to be 1 here, zeros all the way down. So we're going to get 0, 1, and a whole bunch of zeros but then add 1. So we're going to get 0, 1, sorry, not 0, 1. This then is the opposite of this, which is right. Well, then what's this number? If this is that, and that's the biggest positive number we have, what can this be? Well, let's do the bitwise complement, see what happens. Do the bitwise complement of this, you get 0 and all 1's. Well, now add 1, remember, for 2's complement. What we get is a cascade all the way down. 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, so on and so forth, all the way down to here, where you get 0, carry the 1, and 1. Well, we got 1 and all zeros again. Well, that's what we started with. So the 2's complement of this number is itself. And what we have, since it's a negative number, and it's 1 bigger than this in a bitwise complement fashion, it must be that. And when you do the bitwise complement, you just get that again. There is no positive number 32,768. It only goes up to 767. So this is how it works, and that's 2's complement. Now, this makes sense. When we go all the way out to these numbers in a 32-bit system, which is the same as your PC. So what's the biggest number you can get? Well, 0 for the negative bit, because we want the biggest number we can get. Two billion, one hundred forty-seven million, four hundred eighty-three thousand, um, six seventy-three. Oop. Nope. Six hundred forty-seven. Sorry. That's the biggest positive number you can get. Does that sound a little familiar, or at least close? Because that seems like where our program stopped. So what happened? Well, we were adding numbers. We were adding 1, adding 1, adding 4,000, adding a bunch of numbers until we got to this point. And then we added 1. And what happens? We get that cascade, right? The same cascade we got over here. So that adding 1 from 2,147,483,647, adding 1 to that caused this cascade all the way down. You tried to add 1, you got 0 with a carry, 0 with a carry, all the way down to here, and got a 1 in the, in the sign bit, again, on a PC. So you now have 1 and a whole bunch of zeros. Well, think back to this, what's 1 and a whole bunch of zeros? It's the smallest negative number you have. So adding 1 to a po big positive number actually gave us a very, very small negative number. And that's why it stopped, because we added one in that while loop. We added one, and that cascade happened, and all of a sudden the value was negative 2,147,483,648. Based on 2's complement, it rolled over, caused that cascade, 
and gave you a negative number, which is less than negative 1, which made the loop stop. And that's, what it, that's why I printed out what it did. That's what's called overflow, causing one number to overflow into an area where it's not supposed to be. This sign bit should not be overflowed into. It should just be, just, it should just be standard. Hopefully that explains a little bit about what happens when you're storing integers and what happens when an overflow occurs. So you need to be aware of that when you're writing code because while we don't typically use numbers that are as big as 2,147,483,647, we can use numbers that big. So you need to be aware of that when you're writing your code. Hopefully this explains overflow and two's complement a little bit. And hopefully you learned a little bit something from it. And thanks for watching.